Welcome and welcome back to this channel where we are aiming to finish the Bible and we've been reading five chapters a day for the past 25 days and if you wish to finish the Bible too and if you have your Bible with you grab your Bible right now and let's continue today we are reading from Numbers chapter 9 and if this is your first time seeing this go and check the other videos out and read along with it we are reading from Numbers chapter 9 to chapter 13 today. Let's get to it. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year, after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel keep the Passover at its appointed time. On the fourteenth day of this month, at twilight, you shall keep it at its appointed time. According to all its rites and ceremonies, you shall keep it. So Moses told the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So the children of Israel did. Now there were certain men who were defiled by a human corpse, so that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and Aaron that day. And those men said to him, We became defiled by a human corpse. We are kept from presenting the offering to the Lord at his appointed time among the children of Israel. Why are we kept from presenting the offering of the Lord at his appointed time among the children of Israel? And Moses said to them, Stand still, that I may that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If any one of you or posterity of if any one of you or your posterity is unclean because of a corpse or is far away on a journey, he may still keep the Lord's Passover. On the fourteenth day of the second month, at twilight, they may keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until morning, nor break any of its bones. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man who is clean and is not on a journey, and ceases to, and ceases to keep the Passover, that same person shall be cut off from among his people, because he did not bring the offering of the Lord at its appointed time. That man, that man shall bear the sin. And if a stranger dwells among you and will keep the Lord's Passover, he must do so according to the rite of the Passover and according to his ceremony. You shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and the native of the land. Now on the day that the tabernacle was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, from evening until morning. It was above the tabernacle, like the appearance of fire. So it was, so it was always. The cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, after that the children of Israel would journey. And in the place where the cloud settled, there the children of Israel would pitch their tents. At the command of the Lord, the children of Israel would journey. And at the command of the Lord, they would camp. As long as the cloud stayed above the tabernacle, they remained encamped. Even when the camp, when the cloud continued long, Many days above the tabernacle, the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and did not journey. So it was when the cloud was above the tabernacle a few days, according to the command of the Lord, they would remain encamped, and according to the command of the Lord, they would journey. So it was when the cloud remained only from evening until morning, when the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they would journey, whether by day or by night. Whenever the cloud was taken up, they would journey, whether it was two days. A month or a year that the cloud remained above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would remain encamped and not journey. But when it was taken up, they would journey. At the command of the Lord, they, they remained encamped, and at the command of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Chapter 10 And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of armored work. You shall use them for calling the congregation and for directing the movement of the camps. When the blow both of them, all the congregation shall gather before you at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. But if they blow only one, then the leaders, the heads of the divisions of Israel, shall gather to you. When you send the advance, the camps that lie on the east side shall then begin their journey. When you send the advance the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall begin their journey. They shall send the call for them to begin their journey. 
And when the assembly is to be gathered together, it shall blow, but not sound the advance. The son, the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall blow the trumpets, and this shall be to you as an ordinance forever, throughout your generations. When you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpet, and you will be rem and you will be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. Also, in the day of your gladness, your appointed feast, at the beginning of your month, you shall blow the trumpet over your bond offering and over the sacrifices of your peace offering, and they shall be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. Now it came to pass on the twentieth day of the second month, in the, se in the second year, that the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle of the testimony, and the children of Israel set out from the wilderness of Sinai on their journeys. Then the cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. So they started out for the first time according to the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. The standard of the camp of the children of Israel set out, set out first according to their armies. Over their army was Nashon, the son of Amiadab. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nathanael, the son of Zohar. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Zebulun was Eliab, the son of Elon. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Goshen and the sons of Merari set out, carrying the tabernacle. And, and, the, and the standard of the camp of Reuben set out according to their armies. Over their army was Elizur, the son of Shedor. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Simeon was Shelmiel, the son of Zuri Shaddai. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Gad was Eliasaph, the son of Duel. Then the Kohathites set out, carrying the holy things. The tabernacle would be prepared for their arrival. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set out according to their armies. Over their army was El Shama, the son of Amiud. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Manasseh was Gamaliel, the son of Pedazor. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abidam, the son of Gideon. Then the standard of the camp of the children of Dan, the rear guard of all the camps, set out according to their armies. Over their army was Ayezer, the son of Amishadai. Over the army of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pagiel, the son of Okran. And over the army of the tribe of the children of Naphtali was Ayer, the son of Enan. Thus was the order of march of the children of Israel according to their armies when they began their journey. Now Moses said to Obab, the son of Reuel, the Midianites, Moses father in law, we are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give to you. Come with us and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good good things to Israel. And he said to him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my relatives. So Moses said, Please do not leave, inasmuch as you know how we are to camp in the wilderness, and you can be our eyes, and it shall be if you go if you go with us, indeed it shall be. That whatever good the Lord will do to us, the same we will do to you. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord on a journey of three days. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them for the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was above them by day when they went out from the camp. So it was whenever the ark set out that Moses said, Rise up, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. And let those who ate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel. Chapter 11 Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them, and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? Remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumber, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its color like the color of delium. The people went about and gathered it, ground it on millstones, or beat it in the mortar, cooked it in pans, and made cakes of it, and its taste was like a taste, was like the taste of pastry. 
prepared with oil. And when the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna fell on it. Then Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families. Everyone at the door, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was displeased. So Moses said to the people, Why have you have why have you afflicted your servants? And why have I not found? So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servants? And why have I not found favor in your sight? That you have laid the burden of all these people on me. Did I conceive them? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them? That you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a guardian carrying a nursing child to the land which you saw to their fathers. Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone, because the burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my wretchedness. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting, that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you, and will put the same upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you may not bear it yourself. Then you shall say to the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, not two days, not five days, not ten days, not twenty days, but for a whole month, until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you, because you have despised the Lord who is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why did we ever come out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people who, whom I am among are six hundred thousand men on foot. Yet you have said, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month. Shall flocks and earths be slaughtered for them, to provide enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them, to provide enough for them? And the Lord said to Moses, As the lots are being shortened, Now you shall, see what, you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the seventy men of the elders of the children of the people, and placed them around the tabernacle. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the seventy elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. But two men had remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad, and the spirit rested on, upon them. Now they were among those listed, but who had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told, and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Then Moses said, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses returned to the camp, he and the elders of Israel. Now a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quail from the sea, and left them fluttering near the camp, near the camp, about a day's journey on this side, and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp, and about two cubits above the surface of the ground. And the people stayed up all that day, all night, and all the next day, and gathered the quail. He who gathered least gathered ten omas, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So it, so he called the name of that place Kibroth Atava, <laughs> because there they buried the people who had yielded to craving. From Kibroth Atafa, the people moved to Azeroth and camped and camped at Azeroth, chapter twelve. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, As the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses, 
Has he not spoken to us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and the boat went forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with, with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings, as he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and it departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. Then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was a leper. So Aaron said to Moses, O oh my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us, in which we have done foolishly, and in which we have sinned. Please do not let her be as one dead, whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, Please heal her, O God, I pray. Then the Lord said to Moses, If her father had, had but spit in her face, would she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shot out of the camp seven days, and afterward she may be received again. So Miriam was shot out of the camp seven days, and the people did not join it till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people moved from Azeroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Chapter 13, the last chapter. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord. All of them who were heads of the children of Israel. Now these were their names, from the tribe of Reuben, Shammah, the son of Zachor, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Ori, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jehovah, from the tribe of Issachar, Igal, the son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia, the son of Nun, from the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphael, from the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi, from the tribe of Joseph, that is, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Suzi, from the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemali, from the tribe of Asher, Setor, the son of Michael, from the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vophsi, from the tribe of Gad, Gel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Joshua. Oh, Oshia is now Joshua. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the into the south, and go up to the mountains, and see what the land is like. Whatever the people who dwell in it, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether they are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruits of the land. Now. The time was the season of the fruit. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Reub, near the entrance of Amat. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Aiman, Sheshai, and Talmai. The descendants of Anak were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Soan in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol. And they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Ishkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and, and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh, they brought back word to them, and 
to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the lamp of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, the Amalekites, dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, of the land which they had spied out. The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that divorced its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. They were there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. The end of today's video. Now these people are being skeptical about conquering the land which the Lord has promised them. The Lord has confirmed it. I will give this land to you and now they have it to go. But Caleb, thank God for Caleb. Caleb is brave. Caleb is brave. And tomorrow we'll continue and see what happened after the reports that they gave to the children of Bishop. What happened? Did they go up to conquer the land? How many people made it to the land? We will see all that in the next episode. And as for the 25th day that I said I did not see, I don't know how it disappeared on my phone. I will try figuring it out. And if I can't, I will record another. And I'll make sure it is uploaded. Thank you very much for watching this video. And thank you for reading along. And thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. Yeah. And the Lord bless us all. Now, I have to get to work. Thank you very much. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.